Yeah, so we're live. Uh, sige, Dave. Uh, right. Let's start. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Academia's second live webinar. webinar. We received a featured engineer Marvin as he tackled about robotics process automation and how it affected businesses, the certifications, and career for robotics process automation, and some real life applications of RPA, especially in the industry. This afternoon, we're going to give you guys another treat. As we all know, the previous generations of mobile networks have been prevalent in our lives for quite some time now. Nagsimula tayo sa 1G to up to 4G sa ngayon. And we've been using different generation of mobile networks for years. And recently, may, may bagong pumasok na mobile, gener mobile network na generation, which is the 5G. The 5G network is still unknown to many despite of the current modern modernization na nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Ang dami pa rin tao na skeptical about it, whether effective ba siya, gano'n ba siya kalakas, gano'n siya makaka-apekto sa mga businesses, and even may mga conspiracy theories pa nga, di ba, na, uy, baka may ano yan, may health risk yan. So, so today, we have a special guest to clear up to clear up the air and to give you a crystal clear introduction to 5G networks. Young, dynamic, she intends to produce innovative ideas derived from purpose and deliver responsibilities entrusted to him while keeping his team engaged to impact such positive changes in the society he belongs to. So, a, a little background muna kay speaker before we commence. Ang favorite motto niya ganito, you'll never know how close you are to success until you reach it. So, educational background niya, he graduated as cum laude, um, Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering sa Angeles, Angeles University Foundation noong 2012. Ito yung malapit. He, licensed, he passed the licensure, he passed the Professional Regulation Commission Board of Licensed Engineer, Electronics Engineering with the whopping grade of 92.6 over 100. <laughs> Lupit, sir. So work experience naman. Um, he was the head, he is the head network technology innovations and mass mastery on specifications, design, planning, engineering for LTE, LTEA, and LTAA Pro 5G systems, Internet of Things, lead design engineer for the first 5G in the Philippines. He manages both technical and business readiness of the intelligence solutions initi initiatives, the globe, starting from 2013 hanggang sa ngayon. So active engagements niya ngayon, connected siya as a certified line, line trainer course as, as facilitator sa mga LTE system overview, 4G converge and con capacity planning, 5G overview, and key technologies, key technologies sa Globe University, 2019 hanggang ngayon. And he was also a guest speaker for evolution of mobile communication sa radio engineering circle. As for the honors and awards, he received a Globe Cadetship Program Award in 2013, a certificate from Huawei, a certificate of merit from Huawei in 2016. Uh, and he was also a Globe Access Engineering Implementation Employee of the Year Awardee in 2017. So, wag na patagalin pa. Please welcome Engineer Derek Dimla. Hi, good afternoon everyone. So I think, uh, hope ano pala, you can see me, you can hear me clearly as well. And no, uh, nakikita ba yung video ko? Okay lang, no? Sige, let's start. Uh, so thank you for the introduction, Sir Dave. No? Uh, mm. You're correct, I've been working with Luke for seven years. And uh, yun nga, no? the idea uh, when it comes to cellular technology development and even if sure. being studied as part of our, uh, uh, of course, development ng, ng cellular technology, not only Philippines, but even on a global scale. Now. So let me share my screen. Hey, so, this afternoon, we'll be talking about the introduction to 5G network. And uh, hopefully, now I can demystify it in, in, in layman's term and even. Yeah. 
5G is uh, one of the hot topics here in the, in the country. Uh, and pro it provides no, yung, yung higher speeds and higher capability. So, okay. Now, uh, the points of discussion basically would run from the principles of standards and intro to and uh, kagay na banggit ni Sir kanina, no? we started with 1G, 2G, 3G, dadaanan din natin yan. But before that, I want you to understand uh, what is a communication ba? What is a communication so And from, uh, from you know, the quickest way to, to, to understand what's communication is you have to put it in Google and then uh, press the enter. No? You will see that it's basically, it's, it's just sending and receiving messages. So, continue natin, we have to further break yung exchanging information between two parties. So, uh, if you remember, no, may mga certain ways, may mga certain uh, types of communications that we've learned from the past. Meron tayong gumagamit ng smoke to tell signal or alarms. No? Gumagamit din tayo ng mga drum beatings to know na may mapapayating, ganyan, or to, to give us alarms as well. Gumagamit din tayo ng mga tambulin no? or yung mga horns to not try people of what may become or meron bang uh, or meron bang kapahamakan no? all of those things are being used to inform people of the current situation and uh, may makakinuma din akong ibang types dito like yung ano yung yung uh, homing pigeons so ito yung mga birds na ginagamit nila to send message across uh, across places and uh, medyo malayang distance so they use these uh, pigeons or these birds para makapagsend ng information and uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can Google it. Makikita natin na uh, tinatrain nila yan to, to, to take away these pigeons from their home and then put it in anywhere else. And then kung gusto lang mag-send a message, just put it and then free it up. So babalik siya dun sa kanong pinanggalingan. And one thing na pinakagusto ko sa lahat, no, ito yung ano, so ito yung marathon. Kung familiar kayo, marathon, well, it's, it's a 42.195 kilometer distance ra, no? But uh, ang marathon kasi is a place, no? Uh, yan yung tinakbo ni... Philip Ides, para dun sa, i-deliver yung message that uh, they won on a certain war. So he ran 42 point, and it's, it is believed to be, you know, to have a 42.195 kilometer distance. Sinakbo na yun to send the message or to deliver the message. Kaya lang, uh, based on on, on uh, studies, no, namatay siya after yung tumakuha ng ganun kalayo. Anyway, that's that's a form of uh, communication we're telling. We're just simply sending a message, no? And uh, the system would, always, would only be completed if na receive siya ng other end. So, yun tinatawag natin communication in an end-to-end -end system. Now, from, from those, uh, from, from, those uh, from the types of, uh, of those communications that I recently showed, no, nandiyan yung sending and receiving message. So, from one end, you can send and the other end would receive. So, the other way around, then pwede mag-send yung receiver end and then uh, mag-send siya and then receive naman ng, ng and nakita natin in between those two uh, parties, meron siyang ginagaan na medium. Okay? So meron tayong smoke, meron tayong drum beats, courier, and uh, let's say horn. At alam din natin na this communication runs through a distance. So kung mag magkalapit lang kayo, you can do communication through voice. Pero pagka we're talking about larger distance, yung ating uh, ways or, or sending message over a distance somehow is challenged you know, because of the, what we call the attenuation o paghina no signal source natin or yung ating source. Okay? So, uh, makita natin also na it evolved as well, no, yung ating ways of communicating with other people. Gumamit tayo ng, yan, yan, subukan natin gumamit ng in our, in our science, ano, no, na experiments na meron na over time and and, 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 no, para maka- develop na yung system systems. And now, in the latest na meron tayong technology, no, meron tayong tawag na the internet. So, paano ba nag-work yung internet? Natin, you always start with your application. Kaya hindi naman pwedeng uh, pupunta kagad sa application server. You have to start with the application first. What, what would be the application? Meron kang application na, na let's say, uh, Nag-Netflix ka, nag-YouTube ka, yan makikita natin yung, yung mga application. Then it comes to the user. Yung user natin, he has the device to communicate with either router or let's say yung phone mo mismo is capable of connecting to wireless technologies. 
So, yung tatawag nating modem or modulator. The modulator meaning it modulates and demodulates yung signal in an understandable figures that uh, a device or an equipment would understand. So, tapos yan, pupunta yan sa ISP access facilities. No? Yung facilities natin na nakikita may mga towers dyan, may mga kable, may mga... And, you know... Uh, when when sometimes i browse i browse things on i browse things on facebook no? nakikita ko may mga tao na medyo aware na ng mga nangyayari sa paligid nila like yun nga na may nakita ako na, na nag, naglalagay ginagalaw daw yung cabinet kaya nagkakaroon ng downtime no these people are, are really somehow can understand already what is what it is to have an internet uh, connection so pag may nakita silang mga mga uh, tao na no? nag-aayos ng mga cabinets I said, "Bilay magdedaw na naman yung internet ko and so on and so forth." So these are what we call the access facilities. Kung bagay ito yung pinaka dulo ng network ng isang ISP bago kumonek yan sa bahay mo. Okay, and we have the ISP for network where it processes billions and millions of data para lang maibigay or madirect sila, maaddress sila into certain application server where you requested your information. Let's say kung manonood ka ng Netflix, pupunta yan sa application server ng Netflix. So, doon siya kukuha ng information and then babalik yan to the ISP core network to again to address it to certain access facilities through IP addressing and then pupunta yan sa modem mo, pumunta sa user and then your application. Okay? Clear, clear pa naman? Okay. Yan. Clear pa ba, sir? Still there? Narinig pa naman? Yes, sir. Uh, clear po, clear po. Okay. Okay. So, now, uh, so, pero ba bago tayo pumunta sa internet, no, and the deeper uh, things about this, ano, we can check din as well, ano ba yung, ano, ano ba yung, ano, ano ba yung app-based messaging natin? If you're gonna, if you're gonna use the internet, and the only way for, you know, to understand or to, to communicate is to use some messaging okay and uh messaging application okay. sila sila fiber sila messenger okay so, makita din natin dito that if you're running on application then you still have to go to an application server lahat ng mga ginagawa natin using the internet okay using an application would have to run on an application server. Okay, lagi natin tatandaan yan. And dumadaan yan, again, so user, modem, ISP facilities, ISP for network. So how do you communicate is basically one must have, ano, one must have the application from the receiver and sender end. Okay? So makikita natin dito, dapat yung kausap mo, meron siyang application that, would, that can also uh, connect to the application server. So meaning, the moment na the guy has the application, but hindi siya connected sa server, so he will still be unavailable in your in your uh, feed, let's say, or sa sa nung sa contacts mo. Okay, those that, that's how, that's how you messaging that then app based messaging. Still, it connects to application server. Kaya you're able to call and text people because of this type of uh, architecture. Okay, so pero bago bago natin uh, pag-usapan no yung yung 5G and its all, and its introduction so makikita natin dito no we have the pre wifi and pre data configuration bago pa magkaroon ng internet we were able to call each other using our phones diba kaya meron tayong ano meron tayong mga plans na ginagamit or may mga may mga kinukuha tayong plans with, with the telco or mga telco natin na para makatawag ka I remember noon may mga um, unlimited calls din no na sinasabi nung naglabas ng ibang telco ng ganung klase ng product offering. So makikita natin dito that for you to be able to connect to a network, okay? Your device in this in this particular deck na makikita natin kung gusto mo makatawag, okay? Your device must be capable of connecting to a network because the chipset or yung laman ng phone mo is capable of that technology. Kung 2G yan, dapat yung phone mo is 2G capable. Kung 3G yan, dapat yung 3G mo, ay yung phone mo is 3G capable as well. And so, with, you know, with, with 5G network, no? 
kung, kung gusto mo ng 5G uh, services, you have to first have a device that can connect to a network. Okay, so makikita natin dito in just a visual, visual presentation, lahat ng mga uh, devices that are within the blue coverage, okay, na tawag natin coverage yung blue, would be able to connect. Okay, yung mga iba na nasa labas ng coverage, okay, hindi sila nasa, na, nahahagip ng signal, so yan yung mga nagreklamo na, ah, bakit mahina yung signal, ah, bakit hindi ako makatawag, ah, bakit hindi ako makadata, hindi ako makakonect. So, that's a problem of putting up towers. No? Even even putting up towers would actually uh, limit your your connectivity. It's because of the power that's being radiated by the tower. At alam naman natin na habang lumalayo ka, humihina din yung signal natin. That's why putting more towers is a more uh, intelligent way of resol of solving these issues. No? Lalo na kung may, ano, kung may mga tao tayo na isi-serve in the area. Okay? So, kung nasa labas ka, yun tatawag natin cannot be rich no? or cannot be contacted or cannot be rich at, at this moment. Okay. So pag lumapit siya sa site, saka siya magkaaroon ng signal. And that's a good uh, indication that you're already connected. So wireless connection. Alam naman natin that uh, using mobile phones gives us mobility. Kaya nga tawag siyang mobile phone kasi you can move around no? and you have a signal. At makikita natin dito that there's no connection between the two hindi ang phone lang natin ang nakikita natin at wala tayong ibang nakikita kung saan siya kumukonek. Ah, pero nakikita natin yung mga towers and and okay. so ito ang tawag nating wireless connection. And wireless connection it is the link no that connects yung device natin and the network. And it's also called the air interface technology. So pagka halimbawa lang no if you're using a, a an optical mouse Connect mo siya sa laptop mo or sa desktop mo. Meron na tawag na USB interface. That interface uses the USB universal serial bus that will connect to the mouse and then the mouse would be able to connect or to communicate with the laptop or the device or to the computer. No? And uh, for this type, uh, nag-evolve din yan to Bluetooth technology no? and even Wi-Fi. May mga wireless mouse na tayo that can connect to Wi-Fi. Meron din tayo tawag na Bluetooth mouse that can connect to Bluetooth technologies. Same with wireless connection in terms of cellular technologies. They're using wireless signal to connect to the tower. Okay? Or pagka na natin in a, sa isang, sa, in a more technical way, kukonect siya dun sa antena na bumubuga ng links na tinatawag natin or what we call the air interface technologies. Yun yung 5G. Nandun siya sa wireless connectivity. Para lang maintindihan natin because uh, if you try to look the, at this one, no, okay, meron kang physical devices, meron kang, meron kang tower, meron kang phone, but what we cannot see is the link that connects the device and the network. Diba? Hindi natin siya nakikita. That is why, para lang maintindihan natin, I, 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 I've used my representation here or visualization no imagine this one you have a tank and you want to transfer water to a certain pail or a bucket At alam naman natin dapat may purpose kung bakit ka maglalagay ng tubig sa pail if you want to to let's say water the plants or magbubuhos ka ng tubig area you would use that type of uh, use that purpose para again same thing same principle when it comes to getting information from you want to say to get what's the latest trend you go to facebook and then you browse diba? so you're requesting data from the internet from the for, from the community of facebook ano ba yung mga hottest trends okay you, you will have a purpose for you to be ano called na ano ka na, na in ka diba parang ganoon sa mga issues and if if let's say kung gusto mo naman ng news you can actually download information from uh, variable sources so Makikita natin dito, same thing. No? You have to have a purpose then bago, ka, bago mo gawin yung, yung isang bagay. And in this case, yung kawa ng tubig sa tanke. And alam naman natin, na pag kumuha tayo ng, ng tubig sa tanke, then y- ganti ginagawa natin. May, may pipe tayo. In relation to what we call the mobile communication or the link. So you have to have that link. And the link is yung tatawag natin, so yung pipe. So, i-visualize lang natin, the moment I open the valve, yung nangyayari dyan is na-fill up yung aking bucket. And, kung intindihin natin siya, nagkaroon ka ang tank na uh, 20 liters daw, ang capacity. Mer- initially, meron siyang bucket, no? Ito, ito, and it was filled up full daw at 5 seconds. So, the remaining water in the tank now is 15 liters. What is the rate of 
try to break it down, may 20 liters daw yung tank and then after 5 seconds, naging 15 liters na lang. So, ang naging displacement ng water is 5 liters. And that happened in 5 second, uh, five second period. Okay. So, makikita natin dito, just calculating it, yung bracket capacity natin would be the 20 liters minus the 15 liters. So, that would be the 5 liters. Ibig sabihin, yung bracket natin is 5 liters, full, okay? And then, yung transfer niya is 5 seconds, okay? So, ngayon, magkaaroon tayo ng rate of transfer. So, meron na tayong uh, transfer with respect to time. Same with, uh, same, same sa communicating, uh, when communicating using uh, wireless technologies, no, meron tayong with respect to time. Okay. Yeah. For now, no, kung makikita natin yung mga data, data na, na na offer natin are usually rate at speed with respect to time. So, alimbawa na may mga nakita kong celebrity posting that their internet reached this, let's say, uh, ano, 350 Mbps, that would be megabits per second. So, same with this one, no, meron tayong ibang unit na ginamit which is 1,000 milliliter per second. Same then, dun sa data na tinatransfer natin over the air. It is measured, the data, pagka mas malaki yung number, meaning mas malaki yung megabits or millions of bits that we are transferring over a period of a second. Okay? So, ginagamit nating time is second. So, let's say kung in, in, after 10 seconds, no, yung, three, yung 350 na yun, that would be around 3,500 millions of bits. Okay, ganun natin siya, or that, that's equivalent to 3.5 gig. Okay, so makikita natin na gan, ganun siya kung gan, ganun yung ating uh, time. So para maintindan lang natin, bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng Mbps and so. Okay, so the, the key here, wireless links, okay, are something that cannot be seen, okay, it's something that cannot be heard, no? it's something that be, ano, that siya maaamoy, natin laki, na natitikman din, okay, at hindi natin siya na hawakan. But we can actually measure it. No? Uh, for reference, you can just try to capture this one. Pwede nyo gawin sa bahay. You can actually measure those links. Okay? Yan, ginagamit. Meron tayong mga ginagamit na information. Uh, this is for LTE, no? uh, lalo na for areas that we don't... For the 5G is not... Ano, no? is, is curved, no? yeah, yun yung pwede natin gamitin. LTE muna. So the links, okay? The connection between your phone and your network is somehow measured by these test tools. And these are uh, uh, available yan sa mga available yan sa, sa mga phones natin. At least for iPhone and Samsung, yung, yung Huawei, hindi ko pa siya nakikita yung kung paano yung magiging test uh, field niya. But you can use this, ano, these things, these numbers. Okay. So, na measure natin siya. And these indications or, or these indicators would tell us kung gano'n ba kalaki yung pipe na pwede nating ma-acquire during the request. So again, uh, after so naintindihan naman natin yung yung ano na yung, yung wireless communication principle and connecting to the network via wirelessly. And bago pa man magkaroon ng 5G, correct ulit si Sir Dave no as part of his introduction. Was able to mention meron tayong 2G, 3G, 4G. So what is 5G basically? No? Later, makikita natin yan. Ang 3GPP ang gumagawa ng standard when it comes to cellular technologies. Though there are other, and then uh, there are bodies, other bodies like IEEE, no? IITU, may mga gumagawa din sila ng mga specification. But for 5G, that is currently being a hot topic now, no? ang naglabas sa si 3GPP. So 3GPP ay third generation of private-public partnership where it's uh, bin binubuo siya ng iba't ibang organization sa buong mundo, and the intention, the, the group is intended to create technical reports and specifications. Specifications meaning ito, ano ba yung tatargetin natin na speed, ano bang network ang gagamitin natin. So lahat yun pinag-uusapan nila in two, three technical support groups or natawag natin TSG. So sa case na to, makikita natin, meron lang naman tatlo on the left side na, avail, uh, uh, na, na prominent which is the RAN, CT, at saka SA, si RAN, ito yung tatawag natin Radio Access Network. So sila yung gumagawa ng mga access technology, sila yung nag-design, ano ba yung specification, ano bang technology, and so on. Si CT naman, ito yung tatawag natin Core and Terminal. Sila yung 
gumag sila yung uh, gumagawa din ng mga dis, ng mga technical uh, specifications ano ba yung magiging laman ng core network sa tsaka ng mga terminal when you say terminal ito yung mga mobile phones na gagamitin on the end user part meron din tayong tinatawag na system services and aspects sila yung nag ano, ng ano bang frequency yung gagamitin ano bang technology ano bang system ano bang process ano ba yung magiging uh, signaling procedures etc So silang tatlo nag-usap yan to create a technical reports and specifications that will later be developed into products. No, ito na yung mga products na ginagamit natin. Meron tayong end devices, meron din tayong mga core networks na ginagamit ng mga telco, may mga ginagamit din mga core functions na makikita. Lahat yan, pasok yan sa 3GPP standards. Okay? So sila yung naglalabas ng mga standards. So now, 5G more than a technology as we know it. No? 5G as a technology. Bago siya, or or better na tawaging standard muna siya bago tawaging technology. Kasi, well, 5G, madam siyang technology within. Okay? At lahat ng mga technology na yon the technical reports are, or, or yung, mga, yung mga capabilities niya are written on the technical report and specification. So, lahat ng yon na nakalagay sa 3GPP are being followed by uh, local and regional na, na mga Uh, deployment groups. Like halimbawa, sa case ng Pilipinas, meron tayong dito Smart and Globe as Delco. Sila yung network. No? Tapos may mga devices provider din tayo. The Samsung, Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, uh, Apple. And syempre, dapat siya ginagover niya ng, uh, ng isang committee no? to tell us ano, i-regulate niya yung paggamit ng frequency naman. Or ng mga, kumbaga, ito yung mga highway na ginagamit natin para, para ipadala yung data. Okay, so si NTC naman yon, siya may hawak ng ating ano, ng, ng approval on the use of the frequency. So makikita natin na 3GPP started from 2G, 3G, and 4G, and 5G. At makikita dyan natin dyan lahat ng mga corresponding uh, names ng technology. Within. So halimbawa, for, for 5G, no? 3GPP 5G, for 4G, makikita natin ito yung line na to. For 4G, babasahin natin. 4G, nandito sila LTE Advanced, LTE Pro, and LTE. So, 3.5G, nandiyan si uh, 3.75, no? And, and for, uh, crossing 4G, nandiyan sila LTE, HSPA, WCDMA, Edge, GPRS, and so on. So, G, and G, GSM, nandiyan pa din yan for voice call natin. Okay, so if you want to learn more about 3GPP, you can just visit this one. Again, 3GPP, is the, is the standardizing, uh, standardizing body. No? Siya yung gumagawa ng mga technical reports and specifications to tell us kung ano yung magiging standard natin for a certain cellular. Evolution lang, uh, 3GPP has a project coordination with ITU. So si ITU is, is the International Telecommunication Union wherein may mga objective sila to create specification uh, on 2020. So ito yan, ito yung target nila to have 2020. Rate, user experience, spectrum efficiency, lahat ng yan. Uh, well, ang familiar tayo dito would be siguro itong latency. No? Latency is what we call the delay. Uh, round trip delay na yung measure natin. Lalo na, familiar kayo kung, ano ka, kung, kung gamer ka. Dapat yung latency mo below ganito para at least maging uh, wonderful yung experience mo. Okay, meron din tayong natawag na ito. Familiar din tayo dyan, data rate. Okay, user experience. So, meaning ito yung magiging experience ng isang user. Okay, so si 3GPP nandito siya. So, ito yung eight governing ano natin, uh, eight organizational partners. Okay? At nakikipag-coordinate sila with the ITU para mag-produce ng mga standards. Okay, so si ITU, nagkaroon siya ng IMT 2020 vision. Ito nga yan, yun yung green na yan. Okay, however, makikita natin here that Bago pa maglabas ng specification si ITU, IMT 2020 na target, naglabas na si 3GPP. Okay, so these are two different organization. Kung titignan natin dito, ay sorry. Kung makikita natin dito, ITU at saka 3GPP, magkaiba yan. Pero meron sila tinatawag na project coordination group. Relate yung ano ba yung magiging requirements ng mga to at saka i-relate nila dun sa mga target uh, requirements nila and then it's being run and being done by technical groups. Network systems and services aspects, and then meron tayong core networks and terminals. Makikita natin dito, no, on 2020, target nila maglabas ng specification. But, nauna si 3GPP, on, uh, on 2017, no, naglabas sila ng first, ano nila. Special risk na 3GPP, oh, magiging ganito yung ating mga standards. 
later makikita natin yan. Tignan natin yung mga standards na sinabi nila. Now, uh, how do we realize 5G? 5G is wireless and it works on power frequency bandwidth and antenna. Wireless technology siya. Okay? So kung halimbawa, yung phone mo, yung device mo, kumonect siya, which is impossible to happen, kung kukonect yan sa, sa network using a wire, uh, a wire no, hindi yan tinatawag na 5G, eh that, hindi mangyari talaga yun kasi wala namang, wala namang wire uh, capability yung phones natin. Okay? So, uh, may mga key na lang, may mga key concepts na gusto kong i-share with you kasi later makikita na natin na 5G has shorter coverage, later makikita natin yan. So, and your 5G, dapat yung 5G mo is, uh, sorry, dapat yung device mo is 5G ready and, and so is your SIM. Kasi kailangan mong kumonek sa network ng mga telco providers para maka-activate ng uh, mga, inis, uh, mga initiation to the, to, the, to the network. Okay, so dapat 5G ready ka. So, sabi ko nga dito, 5G shorter coverage and increasing tower height may help and adding more towers. So, yun nga, no? with, with the need to serve more and more uh, customers and consumers because of the requirement to go online, whether you're working from home or whether you're engaging into online learning. So, lahat ng yan, kailangan natin magkaroon ng connectivity to the internet. And based on sa pinakita natin kanina, no? kung paano nag-work yung internet, there must be an access facility that would be able to serve you. Okay? Whether it's wired or wireless. So, kailangan natin magkaroon ng connectivity. And 5G falls in the cluster of wireless. Okay. So, makikita natin no, sa baba, these are not 5G. Yung pag tinignan mo yung Wi-Fi mo, binuksan mo siya, kumonek ka, nakita mo may dalawang klase ng connectivity dyan. You can go to 2.4 at saka meron kang configure 5G parameters. These are not 5G. Okay, I repeat that. The 5G or 5 gigahertz na nakalagay na binubuga ng Wi-Fi mo if your router is dual band is not a 5G as 3GPP uh, stands or uh, deliberately na ginawa niyo itong 5G standard. Hindi siya related sa Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is IEEE standard and it's a totally, it's totally different from, from the 5G 3GPP. Okay? So, again, hindi ito ah. Hindi ito ang 5G. Yan nakalagay dito, these are not 5G. And not, at saka ito, yung Biomax 5G, hindi yan 5G ah. Na, so, kung may 5G ka daw, minimum ka ng ganyan, uh, hindi ka tatamaan yung sakit na pinapadala ng 5G. So, those are not 5G things. Uh, hindi sila 5G related. Baka, ibang 5G yan. Okay. So, now, uh, 5G basic specifications. Number one is key technology. Uh, ang drawing natin dito is towers kasi it's wireless. So, bubuga ng power at makakonect ka to your mobile phone. And specification applications, makikita din natin yan later. So, ang basic 5G ni Ana natin, benefits natin, it will give us higher throughput. Okay? And, of course, capacity and quicker response. Yung main features ng 5G natin. So, um, so, pag sinabi nila, oh, ano, ba yung ano ba yung magiging benefit ng 5G? And we can respond. Later, makikita din natin yung uh, KPIs niya. Ayan. So, pag sinabi natin higher throughput, it aims to target a 10 Gbps of throughput. Okay? Pag sinabi natin throughput, it's also same with speed. Yun yung minimeasure natin per second pinakamaliit na measurement ng tao ay tatawag na second. Kasi alam mo, pag makikita kayo ng, ng friends mo, let's say, 2 o'clock, okay, the afternoon, so that would be uh, 2, 0, 0, diba? and 0, 0. So, makikita kayo ng 2, 15, that's 2 minutes and, fifth, uh, sorry, 2 hour, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, after 15 minutes, diba? Tapos kung sabi mo naman, no, sige pre, andyan na ako in, in, in 10 seconds. Then you start counting 1, 2, 3. It's the smallest unit that uh, any, any human can understand. So anything below that, pwede tayo mapake. Like yung sa, sa mga movie screening no, or sa mga motion picture, if there are more than, I think, 28 frames per second, pwede natin ma-fake ma, ma yung mga mata natin. Okay? So now, uh, for your device specifications, tignan lang natin dito. Uh, if you're trying to buy a phone and you want a 5G capable device, you realize yung 5G connectivity is you have to check ano ba yung speed niya or 
uh, network. Okay. So, makikita natin dito, for technology, nakalagay 5G. And then, specific din tayo sa bands dapat. So, mayroon tayo tatawag na SH. Okay. okay. Here, on other phones, mayroon silang tinatawag na bands. Yan, mga nakalagay yung mga numbers, which are very critical when it, uh, lalo na pagka naghahanap tayo ng, ng phone. And ito yung medyo bago, no? I, I, Apple i12 Pro Max. And I think for November, ano pati, expected to announce 2020 October pala. So that's next month. Uh, wala din siya nakalagay kung ano yung magiging bands na, mga bands na applicable siya. Again, bands kasi are somehow ano eh, uh, dependent on, on the country that's being deployed. So mga natin dito na device specification niya, very critical. Dapat tingnan natin na 5G capable yung device mo. And dapat uh, 5G bands ready sila. Okay? And even yung technology. Yung mga lahat na makikita natin later. Okay. And uh, alam, naman, alam naman natin that all of the devices, lalo na pag, pag 5G or anything related to frequency, bumubuga man yan, dapat dumadaan yan kay NTC for type approval. So, sabi naman nila, ano yung mga bands na ginagamit natin at na type approve lang sila if they are within their bands na na pasok dun sa atin. Okay? And uh, to give you more idea, no? Uh, lalo na kung bibili kasi kayo sa ibang bansa, no? very critical na i-check muna natin yung mga bands. Kasi baka mamaya 5G phone ka, pero let's say European yung band na gamit mo, baka hindi siya pumasok sa network natin. Okay? Those are the things that you might want to consider when buying or purchasing 5G phone. Now, uh, higher throughput, tignan lang natin yung kanina, no? Remember yung tank natin. One thing, why we're having a good throughput or better throughput than the existing technology, which is yung natin, if they be compared with the pipe uh, size, so makikita natin that the pipe size of 5G has a bigger one on the right side. So, ang magiging application, again, Gusto nga natin na malaman natin ano ba yung magiging purpose on why we're putting this up uh, a little bit higher than the previous one. So, kailangan natin magkaroon ng purpose. So, ang ginawa ko calculation dito is based on a year. Let's say, ilan ba ang gusto kong, uh, ilan ba yung makukonsume ko na tubig in a year if ganitong range yung aking gagamitin na, or ganitong size ang aking gagamitin pipe. Assuming that yung pinanggagalingan ng tubig mo is unlimited, okay, pinanggagalingan ng tubig, at makikita natin dito that the 100 ml per second na pipe, okay, yung size na smaller, uh, makikita natin, it will only consume 3.154 million liter of water lang. Okay? So, 3.154 million, so, uh, million liters of water in a year. Okay? Sa kabila naman, makikita natin uh, that is 10 times, no? Better. Kasi magkaroon siya ng 31.54 million ng, ng million liters of water. So maging application niya would be let's say if you are a farmer and you want and you're an, an agriculture. So mas madami kang madidiligan na halaman as compared to sa mayon kang 3.154. So mas madami kang ma-produce na crops, mas madami kang assuming na no, assuming na, na we're in very good condition, wala tayong no, consider na weather, etc. You have an advantage over the left na na 100 ml per second lang. Because mas madami ka madidili ka ng water, mas madami ka mag-produce ng crops, mas madami ang madibenta mo on the market, mas mataas ang ROI mo in a year. Okay? Pain mo. Okay? Now, uh, makikita din natin dito, no, na mas madami ka talaga magagawa in a year as compared sa, sa kabila. Okay? That's a good thing about this one. So same thing no if in in cellular technology the more information that you have okay the more things that you can do again uh kung sasabi nating lahat pantay-pantay okay kasi uh again there is some na, na depende kasi kung anong gag sa magagamitin yung information eh if you are lying heavily on data lalo na kung your your own analytics 31.54 million bits of information in a year is bigger as compared to, to 3.154 millions of bits. No? Mas madami kang maka-process na data, mas marami kang maka-realization, mas madami kang maka business inputs, and so on so, so forth. Depende sa application. So the more data, bigger. Pero again, it's what we do with what we have. 
So kung ano, kung ano man yun, you're taking advantage of that millions of bits or you're receiving or million, millions of information, then magiging advantage sa yun. Pero kung halimbawa, pinapark mo lang yan, hindi mo lang ginagamit, hindi rin siya, masasayang lang din siya. Okay, so again, uh, the, throughput, the higher throughput here is caused by the bandwidth. 5G has a bigger bandwidth as compared to LTE. Natin that you can put more bits inside, inside the pipe if you are running on uh, 5G bigger bandwidth capacity. Ito, these are not specific numbers, but for visualization lang, makita natin that you're gaining uh, 3.5 better than kaya nung kaya natin yung natin, no? 3 at saka 31. So that's Okay, so alam naman natin that the wider the bandwidth, the higher number of bits are transferred over a period of time. Again, napaka-critical dito na pagsabi natin over a period of time because yun yung nanggagaling yung bits natin per second. Okay, so alam din naman natin that uh, 5G works on frequency. And frequency ito yung parang roads na ginagamit natin para magpadala ng mga sasakyan. Okay, the, the more, mas malaki yung capacity nung, nung, ano, nung, nung road, mas madami kang mapapadaan na sa doon sa tigi isa-isa lang. Okay? So, halimbawa, uh, again, assuming na, na maganda yung traffic system natin and all, no? EDSA is, uh, has a bigger capacity as compared to other, ano, let's say, kung skinita. Yeah. Or meron kang four lanes. Of course, five lanes is always better than at uh, one lane, ano, diba? Na, na, na road pagkakaroon ng permo sila in terms of pagkakaroon papadan ka ng madaming sasakyan. Let's say, kung meron kang 30,000 cars, no? at ang capacity ng one lane mo is one lang per, let's say, per second, and the other ones, five naman, five cars per second, so imagine the 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 time that you will consume para padaanin yung 30,000 cars over dun sa isang uh, one lane na road. Okay? yung ating standard. So, for, again, sabi ko nga, di ba, lahat ng mga bagay or lahat ng release ng 5G or ng 3GPP are all standards. So, ito yung standard na nakalabas kay LTE ngayon. Meaning, we can only use up to 20 megahertz of bandwidth. Meaning, mas maliit yung pipe niya. Okay, as compared to 5G. 5G can reach on the frequency range 1, which is ito. 100 megahertz and up to 800 megahertz pagka sa FR2. Though yung 800 na yan is still yet for, ano, for release pa. Tignan natin sa mga, iba, sa mga future uh, releases ng 3GPP, hindi define din nila yan, hopefully. Okay? So, tignan natin, just comparing it, no? ito five times bigger, yung pipe niya as compared sa LTE. Okay? This one is, ano, ilan na nun? Uh, five times times eight, no? so around 40 times better. Okay, so ang FR1 at FR2, these are the frequency ranges. Kaya very critical when you're looking for a phone, kailangan nating malaman yung mga tinatawag nating uh, frequency band. So yung nakita natin kanina, mayroong N77, 78, 79, mainly nandito. 33, ito yung mga numbers na ginagamit natin. Uh, ito yung ginagamit ng network, okay? Para mag mag na mayroon silang coverage, okay? It can be this one or it can be this one din natin lahat yan. May mga number sila. Kasi, sabi lang natin, these are frequencies. Okay? Let's say frequency 1 and frequency 2. Now, the problem with this one, no, uh, that's why we are assigning frequencies on, the, on networks to use. Kasi pagka, halimbawa, mayroon akong another frequency na naguma, nilagay ko siya dito, interference yan. Kasi kinain mo yung kanyang bandwidth. Okay? Interfere yan. Meaning, magkaroon ka ng loss of signal, of course, magkaaroon ka ng magiging noisy yung environment mo and then yung magiging erratic yung data mo and so on and so forth. So that's why uh, NTC is very critical in, in putting up frequency. Okay? So critical yan sa natin sa pag-design ng wireless technologies. So spectrum and the use of frequency is very critical. Kaya here, no, nakadefine na talaga in every country ang anong gagamitin frequency. And within this one, may mga ina-allow si NTC na ng mga different telco kaya magkapaglagay ng 5G. So, when you're trying to to, well, lahat naman ng phones kasi plan na kung darating sila sa Pilipinas check ni NTC kung in-allow niya frequency for 5G use, kaya ina-type approve nila kung bang yung mga devices na papasok are with at 
uh, they set. Okay? So, yung mga frequency bands natin. Kaya, critical, no, when, we, when we're checking for a device specification, yan, nakalagay yung mga numbers. So, like, for this one, wala pa sila nakalabas. Ito, sa 4G, uh, sa 5G bands naman, let's say, Samsung, uh, dyan, 71, 260, 261, 41. Okay. Same thing with this one, na sila nakalagay. So, yan lang natin yan. Uh, this, nandyan din sa internet, yan, makikita natin ano ba yung ranges na yan. All are in megahertz. So, ibig sabihin yan is 2, uh, 2, 2,000, di ba? 2,000 megahertz, okay? 2,000 megahertz to 2,000 or 20,000, 25. So, same thing. Ah, uh, wala ito. 225. So, makikita din natin dito na may mga numbers na ginagamit. Okay? So, dapat, uh, yun yung, dyan pinapadaan yung data natin. Kung bagay yun yung mga daan, nakaspecify. Okay? Okay, so N34, N38, specific sila on frequency. Ito yun. Tignan natin, ito yung let's say 2010 to 2025. Start and end ng frequency. Okay, uh, makikita natin dito, FR1 and FR2, orange and red. Nandito sila sa tinatawag natin, electromagnetic radio spectrum. Sabi lang natin dito, nandito yung ranges ng FR1, nandito din yung tinatawag natin frequency range 2. So, makikita natin sa taas, this is the wavelength. Sa baba naman yung frequency. Natin, uh, increasing wavelength, pababa, okay, pero tumataas yung frequency natin on papunta sa left. Papunta sa right, tumataas yung wavelength kasi because of this formula. Alam naman natin yung uh, that the frequency is inversely proportional with your wavelength. So, habang tumataas yung frequency mo, okay, umiiksi yung wavelength mo. Pagka naman bumababa yung frequency mo, lumala, uh, humahaba yung wavelength niya. Okay? Dahil, tignan natin dito. Ganun dito. Bawa ito, di ba? 1 hertz. Okay. One hertz after hertz, no? Hindi siya, it really hurts na, na word. So, hertz talaga. So, even it's 1 hertz pa din. So, this one is the wavelength of 1 hertz. Okay? 1 hertz. <laughs> so, okay. so, hindi siya it really hurts nakita natin sa okay. time alimbawa for 1 hertz no? ito yan yan yung tatawag na wavelength okay? for 1 cycle okay? ngayon yung 2 hertz naman natin ito siya 2 hertz ganyan siya kaya lang again kung titignan natin yung cycle niya for 1 cycle niya hanggang dito lang siya Okay? Kasi ito na yung magiging wavelength niya. So, mas maliit siya as compared dun sa wavelength nung nasa taas. Kaya habang mas mataas siya, lumiliit yung natawag nating wavelength. Okay? Ito na yung wavelength ng mas mataas na frequency. At dyan natin sinasaka yung ating data. At yan din ang nakadefine dun sa frequency ranges ating electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? So, Habang tumataas yung frequency, lumiliit yung bandwidth. Habang tumataas naman yung uh, lumiliit yung bandwidth, tumataas yung frequency. Pag tumataas yung frequency, okay, lumiliit yung frequency. Pababa naman yung frequency, tumataas din yung frequency. Number to, okay. So now, uh, again, if you're, like, lalo na doon sa first question na nakapost sa poster na to, na ang tanong nila is that, uh, ano ba yung health risk niya? Kung titignan natin sa electromagnetic spectrum, makikita natin that that the uh, visible light is here. Okay? Nasa malayong wave pa siya as compared to FR2. And ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet comes here. So ultraviolet is coming from the sun. So pagka nagbabad ka sa araw daw na mas matagal, di ba, you're prone to skin cancer because of the ultraviolet risk. Kaya nagalagay tayo usually ng mga skincare products like yung mga pang-block ng uh, UVC, AB, and G. Di ba? Pinablock natin yan using creams. So, kaya kung tinatanong ano ba yung health risk niya, okay, uh, think about ultraviolet. Nandito siya, yung 5G, nandito siya, tsaka nandito. Okay? At yung increasing energy, as alam natin na habang tumataas, lalo na pag x-ray, di ba? We're only para require or, or rec encourage na pagka nagpa-x-ray ka, as much possible, one, once lang a year. No? Para ano, kasi napakataas ng energy na. 
to pass through a certain to your body no kailangan mo mas mataas na energy para makatagos ka within your your body and gamma rays yung pinakadulo it's very dangerous to our health at makikita natin that uh, this radio frequency spectrum is what we call the non ionizing so starting ultraviolet yan yung mga ionizing meaning kaya nila there there would be enough power to break yung cells natin okay or enough energy now uh, higher throughput then because of the coding modulation and mimo again uh, coding would just give us redundancy to our data to protect it and alam naman natin to protect it kung kung yung information mo is the same with redundancy then that would be 50% weight because yung calculation ng coding in behalf of this one natin dito ay tawag na low density parity check uh, pasadahan lang natin siya sabi lang natin dito mas konti yung ginagawa ginagamit na redundancy with the information that's why mas mataas yung rate niya kasi k would be your information redundancy would be your n minus k okay and then the symbol ito yan ito lahat ng ginagamit and tatawag nating code word so in this case itong lahat ng to ito yung buong ano natin ito yung buong information natin it counts na 60 okay or so information natin counts 50 tapos yung ginagamit nating redundancy which is yung red okay i10 that's why ang rate natin is 50 over the code word which is 60 kaya 83% instead of 50% kasi uh, on, on a, sa mga ginagamit na coding usually 50 agad okay modulation uh, gumagamit siya ng higher bits so in, alam naman natin that using digital communication we are based in using 1 and 0 or what we call the base 2 pag ni-raise mo yan at a certain uh, value okay lumalabas yung number of combinations niya so or ilang number of bits ang uh, possible no let's say meron kang 2 bits dalawang possible combination or four possible combination using 2 bits so imagine pagka nagkaroon ka ng 2 raised to 6, that would be 64. So meron kang 64 possible combinations and then each of the combination would have 6 bits. So kaya niya magkaroon ng 6 bits. Okay? Pagkadating sa 5G, no, they're looking at using 2 raised to 10, meaning 10, 24, modulation. It's a type of modulation. Okay? Nakapagkaroon siya ng 10 bits and pagka nagkaroon ka ng 10 bits over a period of time as compared to this one, the 6 as compared to this one as well, uh, 2 bits lang, no? Mas madami siyang bits na napapadala gamit yung bigger bandwidth kanina. Using a uh, uh, better coding technique. No? And then of course, tinatawag nating uh, MIMO or yung tinatawag na antenna technique. Antenna technique naman is using different streams of information over different antennas kasi lahat naman ng phones natin meron silang mga antenna where they can connect yung tinatawag nating link yung link kumukonek sila between antenna. Okay? Pagka gumagamit ka ng uh, with diversity, meaning pinapadala mo yung same information on the same antenna. So, uh, para itong other, kung, kung mailig kayo sa music, no, uh, a mono, uh, a mono na, na speaker is different from a stereo speaker. So, meaning pagka na, na, nakinig ka ng uh, isang music sa using a mono, same information ang pinapadala na narinig mo on your both ears. Okay? So now, if you're using stereo, yung tunog ng kaliwa, iba yung tunog ng sa kanan. So pwedeng yung, yung, let's say, yung vocals na sa kanan, yung, yung gitara na sa kaliwa, so narinig mo na parang nagiging surround yung tunog. So mas nagiging uh, experience mo, mas better kasi yung information na kukuha mo from two different streams, one right, one left, ay magkaiba na. Okay? And yung brain natin is capable of mixing those information to have a uh, para ma ma natin siya ma interpret natin in a, a better way. So same with 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 the knowing technology ng MIMO. The more antenna, more antennas na nakalagay, naka-deploy, mas madami kang pwedeng padala na information ng different streams. So pagka gumamit ka ng MIMO diversity, same information lang ipapadala mo over a period of time. So meaning kung ito pinadala siya kung let's assume 1 bit is 1 second, so 3 bits per second ang information niya. Okay, dito naman, uh, sorry, that's 3 bits over 3 seconds, so that is 1 bit per second. Dito naman, meron kang 3 different bits, okay, 3 different bits, kasi 1 on 1 yung papadala mo, yung 1 padala mo dito, yung 0 padala mo sa second antenna, yung 1 ulit padala mo sa another antenna. So lalabas, meron kang 3 bits per second as compared to this 3 bits per 3 seconds or 1 bit per second. So mas mataas yung throughput mo, 
because of using different antenna and receive antenna. Yung tinatawag nating MIMO technique. For quicker response naman, no, uh, ito yung magandang idea when it comes to 5G with the use of edge technology, yung tinatawag nating multi-access edge computing or edge uh, na servers, mas mabilis, hindi na siya kailangan dumaan pa sa loob ng ating or, or core. No? Ang sasabi lang natin dito, let's say this is your current uh, application now, you're playing, uh, let's say, a mobile duty, syempre mayroon kang user dyan, you either connect to the laptop or connect to your mobile and then uh, access this. And then, pupunta ka sa core network para i-address yung, yung information and then pupunta ka sa application server. With the use of uh, multi-access edge computing, pwede mo nang, mag, pwede ka na maglaga, maglagay ng local host server because your, your 5G connectivity between your uh, access site and your device has a bigger capacity na. And then you can house nga yung mga multiple or multi-access natin na edge computing on the edge or on the access facilities para mas mabilis yung latency. That's one thing uh, good about with 5G. Okay. So now, uh, makikita natin dito, no, uh, these are the 5G benefits at yung mga KPIs natin nakita kanina. 10 Gbps is uh, also called the enhanced mobile broadband. So in terms of deployment, EMBB ang tawag natin sa kanya. And of course, for increased capacity, mayroon tayo tinatawag na massive machine type communication. Uh, again, yung, yung uh, massive machine type communication naman natin okay, is done through uh, what we call the IoT or Internet of Things. When you say Internet of Things naman, okay, though it's another topic, no? pero magiging part din siya ng 5G rollout because they're expecting by 2025, there would be 9 billion things connected. And when we say 9 billion things, no, hindi lang to devices, hindi lang, hindi lang phones ang pinag-usapan natin, hindi lang laptops, kundi even yung mga iba't ibang klase ng sensors na pwede natin gamitin to detect yung uh, specific application na gusto natin. Let's say kung gusto natin ng uh, i-measure yung uh, mga water meters natin, then we can deploy IoT devices sa mga meters sa mga electric uh, corporations at saka sa mga water meters natin. So lahat ng pwede mong you could think of, no? pwede mong lagyan ng Internet of Things na devices or IoT devices. Wherein sila ang mag-measure ng iba't ibang parameters, ng iba't ibang uh, metrics na gusto mong iset. Let's say, for agriculture, pwede mong iset yung, ano, pwede kang maghanap ng mga sensors and devices that could actually measure yung moisture ng lupa. And pagka every time na gumeasure siya, pwede niyang ipadala at a certain uh, uh, server or platform para i-measure or, or para i-gather yung data and then you can do some analytics as well. So let's say kung meron kang agricultural area land nga, no, that would be a bigger than let's say 2 or 3 hectares, then you would need more and more devices. Dati alam natin pag sinabing household, meron kang limang tao, limang tao ang kukonect sa network. But this time, kung yung bahay mo, gagawin mo siyang intelligent home, di ba? gagawin mo siyang intelligent, meaning lalagyan mo lahat ng mga doorknobs mo, may CCTV camera ka, may pang parking measurement ka, etc. Lahat, lahat ng pwede mong i-measure sa bahay mo, nilagyan mo lahat ng devices yan. So, isang bahay, pwede siyang mag-connect mag ng 10 to 15 devices. So, imagine kung meron kang 1 million population, then that would be 10 to 15 million of uh, devices. Okay? So, yun yung kayang gawin ni 5G because of this type of massive machine type communication na a standard din ng 5G. Okay? At alam naman natin, the increased capacity is brought by, number one, uh, yun nga, meron kang higher bandwidth, no? At saka yung kanyang uh, capability to to uh, filter yung ating mga mga slots and resource blocks. Okay? Not, nga, and then lastly, yung tinatawag natin ultra-reliable low latency communication. This would allow as well yung mga driver, dri driverless car. No? Kasi nga, quicker yung response niya. And using URLLC as standard, makikita natin that you could connect in one millisecond time. So, in wala kang delay. At alam na natin with one millisecond, no, anong nagagawa nung response na yun? Kung halimbawa kung nag-drive ka, one millisecond na response. Let's say na-measure niya na merong... Uh, Merong, merong bagay sa harapan mo, let's say the car measures na may, may sakyan sa harapan, it would respond in one millisecond time. So better pa yung uh, reflexes niya, okay, as sa human reflexes natin. Okay? So 
So now, uh, yun nga, no? it's it's uh, 10 times better than the existing technology, which is LTE. LTE can go up to 100 Mbps and 150 with different techniques. So with 5G, mayon can 10 Gbps. For devices, currently LTE can handle 100,000 devices per square kilometer, but 5G can handle 10 raised to 6 or 1 million devices per square kilometer. And then your response natin is 1 millisecond naman as compared to 10 millisecond as LTE, uh, from LTE standard. Now, uh, application and use cases, no? In nga, mayroon tayong security and sustainability uh, using multiple devices or we can connect massive internet of things so to the 5G uh, network and we'll be able to check yung, yung nga, sustainability. Um, anong mga gagawin mong uh, initiatives no, to, to make the environment sustainable as you measure yung environment mo then you measure mo yung nature, di ba? Kung ka, kailan, when, when is the best time of the day to water yung ano mo, yung, yung yung land mo, no, kung mataas yung uh, sunlight, what's the best way to do, and nakikita natin yan. And of course, no, security, may mga intelligent drones tayo, makikita natin sooner, no, may mga lumilipad na drones that are controlled by 5G networks as well. Of course, nandiyan din yung tinatawag na uh, intelligent uh, or artificial intelligence and machine learning. Siya yung magde-decide na, siya yung magbibigay ng mga possible uh, outcome ng mga decision na gagawin mo in terms of business or in terms of whatever use that you might, you might think of. And of course, yung personal and skill development natin, yun nga, meron tayo. Lalo na ngayon, no, mainit ang online learning. Sooner or later, magkaaroon tayo ng mga 3D rendering using AR, VR na uh, application, using your glasses to to design in 3D, no? to learn in, in 3D space. No? Lahat yan, pwede nating magawa with 5G. And of course, syempre, mag evolve din dyan yung ating home entertainment. No? May mga hologram sign na pwedeng gamitin or basically, yung AR, VR din natin. Connecting everything else in, to, the, to 5G. And of course, yung mga, syempre, di mawala yung mga social media application natin. No? Uh, for 5G, let's say, if you would require bigger data, yung nga, kung mag, later, no, kung ang messenger would, would kung mag-hologram din tayo dyan, then you would be needing higher bandwidth connectivity. And of course, yung mga personal variables natin, mga pag-check ng heart rate monitors, again, lahat nga ng mga maisip natin, physical things that might, uh, that, that are able to to measure, no? Yung, yung current uh, settings or environment or yung heart rate, monitor, uh, monitor ng uh, sugar, no? Pwede yan. And of course, mga industries like automotives, no? yun nga, paggamit ng mga driverless car, paggamit ng, ng mga Pag sabi natin, driver in a car, may, sasak, may tao sa loob, wala lang nagda-drive, okay? Meaning, yung, yung, yung driving, uh, fa yung functions ng driver ay nagagawa na to the network. And of course, yung mga industries natin, yung industry for consumer as well, makikita natin dyan that yung uh, mga machines natin or robots natin are controlled in the one millisecond time and responsive sila for production and manufacturing. And of course, yung tatawag natin intelligent city, lahat ng mga devices na pwede natin ilagay dyan to measure or to control yung yung traffic lights, uh, mga security cameras, no? Lahat yan, given that 5G can handle 10, uh, 1 million devices per square kilometer, then you would be able to connect all of these devices. Okay? So now, uh, architecture niya, uh, so ngayon, mayroon tayo tinatawag na NSA, uh, give me more... Tinatawag natin uh, NSA or non-standalone. Kaya dun sa devices natin kayo na nakita natin yung mga terms na to, NSA at SA. Okay. Meaning kung NSA yung device mo, then it, it would be able to connect to the 5G as well. Kaya dapat tingnan natin kung NSA or SA. For the stage of 5G, no, gumagamit tayo ng NSA, meaning dumadaan mo na siya kay LTE para magkaroon ng initial discussion or initial signaling kung tawagin natin. Okay, sila mag-uusap, oh, ano ka ba? Valid ka ba na 5G user? Meron ka bang uh, activation ng service? Meron ka bang enough uh, load para ma-access ang 5G network? Available ba yung devices mo? Lahat na initiation at saka control nandito lahat dyan. Sa 4G muna. So, pag nakita niya, ah, okay, valid user ka, bibigyan na kita sa 5G for download. Okay? Ayan ang ginagawa niya. And again, hindi natin napapansin to sa ating side because this happens uh, this this uh, signaling process happens in the second time. So, pag nakita niya valid 5G user ka, binibigay ka niya kay 5G4 data. This is what we call the NSA and it is 
are heavily dependent sa LTE. Without LTE in the area, then you would not be able to connect to the 5G network. Okay? So kahit na may coverage ka, kung wala, may coverage ka ng 5G, kung wala kang LTE, then wala din. And for SA, no, ito yung magiging uh, uh, future niya and roadmap niya, na yung, yung ating 5G is totally separate ano na siya, entity from 4G. So yung phone mo can connect to 4G and 5G as well, but with separate. Kahit na wala ka ng 4G dyan, no, kahit wala ka ng 4G dito, you can still directly connected o connect to, to 5G. Okay? Ito yung pinagkaiba ng NSA at SA natin. So, ngayon, kailangan natin talaga ng LTE to connect sa 5G natin. And, uh, this would be the last one, no? So, ang limitations lang currently, no? Kasi 5G nakita natin dun sa ating uh, uh, ating frequency ranges, lalo na dun sa nasa L7778. Magami kasi deployment international, uh, locally and Globally, no, gumagamit sila ng nasa 3.5 gigahertz na range. Okay, so ang problem doon is, okay, your 5G downlink, okay, pagka nagpabuga ng information, yung site mo, yung tower mo, pababa sa phone mo, it can reach this uh, bar na no? makikita natin sa phone. Pero hindi siya makakapag-uplink. It's because yung limitation ng phone mo, because it's using uh, uh, battery, yung power ng output power ng phone mo pabalik ng site is limited as well to 23 um, milliwatts no at makikita natin dito yung difference ng downlink mo at uplink kasi communication again communication is sending and receiving and vice versa so pag nagse-send naman yung yung during downlink nakikinig yung phone mo from the BTS or from the site or from the tower from the tower naman alam naman natin it is powered by by ano no by by commercial power at mas at nakaka-plug siya. Alam natin na mas malakas. Siya bumaga bumuga as compared dun sa mobile mo na napakaliit lang because of the mobility because of mobility purposes, hindi siya ganoon kalakas din pabalik sa site or limited yung power niya as regulated and and nga based sa specification natin ganoon lang kalakas yung kanya. Kaya limited lang yung power niya here hanggang dito. Okay? Kaya ngayon anong magiging anong magiging solusyon natin? using other frequencies na mas mababa para i-augment yung uplink capacity. So, even nandito ka na ngayon, yung blue natin, is ito yung tinatawag nating 1.8 gigahertz na coverage. So, pag tinignan ulit natin yung frequency range natin, balikan lang natin ng mabilisan. Kaya dito, no, makikita natin dito, yung 1800 natin, yan, N80, 1710 to 1785, these are supplementary uplink. So, meaning they will help in the uplink of the TDD or, or sorry, the uplink in, in the 5G network. Kaya tatawag silang supplementary. Kaya yan, 1710, 1785. Ano tayo iba dito? 1720. Region. Yun yung tutulong sa kanya to, uh, para magagamitin niya yung 1.8 gigahertz para mga pag-uplink at mga power natin. Okay. At alam naman natin, di ba sabi ko kanina, dahil 3.5G siya, Papunta siya sa left, the, wave le the, the, the frequency gets higher, kaya siya tumataas, but the wavelength is doon, di ba? Papunta tayo dito, ay, wavelength ay bumaba. Kaya malumilit yung kanyang capacity to, to or lumilit yung kanyang yung power niya to cover yung mga areas natin. Okay? So, I think those are the 5G basics no, na pwede nating maintindihan. And if you want to learn more, no, you can check these things. Ito lang talaga ang pinaka-main ng 5G, yung enhanced mobile broadband natin for higher throughput. MMTC, or what we call the mass communication, with 1 million devices per kilometer. And then URLLC niya, or ultra reliable low latency communication. Ito yung pinaka-heart ng 5G. Ito lahat, nanggagaling lahat ng application natin. Or dito sila nag-create ng mga use cases. Their throughput can be AR, VR, for capacity, naman increased capacity is massive Internet of Things, billions of devices connected to the to the network within a square kilometer, and of course, yung URLs, you know, allowing quicker response talaga, lalo na kung mga drivers, driverless car yan, or mga manufacturing, robotics, and so on. So, lalo na pag, uh, ano, pag, uh, syempre, lalo na pag heart rate ang usapan, no? If, if you will send, let's say, yung heart rate mo, bumaba siya, 
and the measure mo pa lang siya after 10 seconds no so that would be a critical thing for na sa mga nagmo-monitor talaga ng heart rate nila lalo na kung ano yan kung uh, telemedicine or teleoperation so and yon we're allowing questions siguro na sir Dave hello hello and let's go yon thank you for the presentation sir so far meron po tayong ano ngayon um three questions start po muna tayo sa pinakasimula so, uh, according to Mike Kevin Glarian, I believe this is ano eh, is 5G, does 5G, is 5G gigahertz wireless bandwidth? So, pareho lang daw po ba sila? And ulit, is? Um, 5G, 5 gigahertz wireless bandwidth. Ah, the answer is, ano, the answer is no. Okay. Mm. 5G is a fifth generation. Okay. So, you okay. know, 5G is a fifth generation. Okay, at sinabi ko nga kanina dito, balik ko nga natin na, yan. So, yung configure 5G parameters is not a 5G, okay? Mm -hmm. 5 gigahertz is a frequency, okay? And 5G is a fifth generation technology, okay? So, yung, yung 5G natin is using cellular frequency ranging from uh, different FR natin, ito yan. Okay, makikita natin dito na wala kang Ah, uh, meron ba tayong 5 gigahertz dito? Uh, meron. Okay, meron din siyang gumagamit din siya ng sa N77, gumagamit siya ng 5 gigahertz or 5000 uh, megahertz na bandwidth. Pero yung 5 gigahertz ng Wi-Fi natin again, is not the 5G ha. Ang 5G natin has to have a frequency like this one at saka sa cellular technology. Hope nasagot natin yung, yung tanong niya, sir. Okay, okay. So, let's proceed tayo sa next question, sir. Ito po, ako, ano, from Timothy Reyes. Engineer Dimla, what can you say about those people against 5G? Magpapatayo sana ng cell site dito sa amin, sa village namin. Kaso, homeowners na, lang, na walang electronics background are against it kasi cancerous daw. I know with proper TX to antenna pairing, it should be safe enough within an acceptable distance. Uh, we, we are, again, for, for uh, non-telco people, uh, what they can look at is ano ba, kung mayroon bang approval from BOH, yung paggamit ng antenna. Okay? And as far as the industry is concerned, lahat ng mga antenna na ginagamit natin, from the frequency ranges to power, no? Lahat yan pinapa-approve natin kay DOH or Department of Health. So, pag in-approve ni DOH yan at na-classify naman nila based on their uh, uh, latest articles na non-ionizing talaga yung, yung power ng 5G given nga yung ating natawag na electromagnetic spectrum. So, maybe we, what, what we can do is to look for documents no, from the industry ng pag-approve ng DOH dun sa mga antenna or mga equipment na ilalagay. Okay, again, so these are yung Frequency ranges na ginagamit natin, 1 and 2. Frequency range 1 and 2 for 5G. Well, ang mainit ngayon na ginagamit natin is, ano, ito pwede na, yung 1. Okay. And, alam naman natin, pagka tumataas nga, okay, may, 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 ano yan, may, may risk talaga. Pag tumataas yung, yung frequency because of the increasing energy. Pero again, kung titignan natin tong spectrum na to, ang, ang araw ay mas mataas pa. Ang health hazard niya, as compared sa paggamit ng frequency natin on cellular technologies. Okay. Kaya classify sila na non-ionizing. So yung mga non-ionizing, ito yung mga tumatagos talaga sa balat. Okay, yan, sila ultraviolet, sila x-ray, sila gamma rays. Kaya, uh, yun, suggestion to, check with the, with the industry kung ano yung pinapropose niya, and then dapat meron silang DOH approved na, uh, uh, or approval from DOH to deploy ng mga ganong klase ng equipment. Okay. So, Sir Timothy, ay, Timothy, I hope nasagot namin yung question mo. So, proceed tayo sa next question, sir. Yes, Pop. From Koy Koy. Sir, pwede po bang malaman ang mga brand ng antenna na ginagamit ng mga telco sa sites? Ah, uh, yun lang, no? I think, iba-iba uh, kasi, iba-iba per telco, no? Pero madami tayong mga brands dyan, no? Some, some, of the, some of the known brands, yan sila. At Trine, sila... Well, madami. May mga, may mga Huawei, may mga uh, RFS, no? uh, mga Comba. Madami, madami. Madaming mga possible antennas na gamitin as long as they are 5G capable. And you can 
try to look at the ano at their pages naman or sa mga ano nila no sa mga tawag dito marketing ads nila kung ano yung mga binibigay nila. Mm-hmm. Okay sir. Uh, last question siguro to sir from Thiago Thiago Delisay. Mm-hmm. Kung bibili ka ng cellphone na 5G, ano dapat ang specs para magamit mo sa Pinas? At ano ba ginagamit dito sa Pinas? SA or NSA or both? Thank you. Yeah. Magandang tanong yan, sir. No? Uh, and uh, again, pagbili ng phone kasi depende kung anong network ang gagamitin mo. No? Uh, Siyempre, kung, kung meron tayong sa, sa ngayon, uh, meron tayong yan, ito yung base sa aking research na meron tayong tatlong possible networks na na are into 5G so si si Globe, si Smart at saka sila dito. And uh pwede nating i-check in with NTC no, uh, yung mga NTC approved devices niya. Sa specs kasi you have to check kung sino ba ang ano sino sino ang provider mo. Okay. Pero ma- madami nga ang ginagamit talaga sa ngayon ay yung uh, sa sa industry standard din gamit tayo ng NSA okay as part of the early stages kagaya ng nakwento ko dito no start na tayo dun sa SA at NSA the early stages kasi talaga niya heavily dependent yung yung core network ng 5G sa 4G kaya NSA kadalasan ang deployment okay now so nasagot natin yon NSA pero most of the devices pag binalikan natin dito sa sa 5G or sa GSM arena no halos naman sila capable of SA at NSA so naka roadmap na yung mga devices nila to go from this type of other type of architecture at tama tama no naka NSA SA sila NSA SA and makikita natin dito it's safe to to use a sub 6 ito or sub 6 gigahertz na bands Okay, specifically for N77, 78, 79, and N41, 38, and 1, and 3. Yan, safe itong gamitin yung mga 1, 3, 38, 41, 77, 78, NSA, NSA. NSA. Okay, so kaya tama kayo. Dapat very specific kayo na i-check yung mga ganitong klase ng mga bands. Okay. So sir, may mga, huma- may mga pahabol questions ka pa. Sige po, go lang. Yan. From Rachel Villanobos, what do you think will happen po sa mga devices that are not capable of 5G tech? Uh, basically, ang, ang frequency kasi, no, meron siyang tinatawag na, well, uh, sa, sa principles ng, ng frequency, balik. Sa uh, principle kasi ng frequency, pagka hindi sila pumasok dun sa band mo na ginagamit, Let's say uh, you are operating and you're communicating using a different frequency. Uh, let's say ito yung ginagamit ko, no? ito yung 5G bands. Na naka-deploy ngayon sa Pilipinas. Okay? Ngayon, yung frequency mo na, na, na band na nabili ay ito, let's say European. Okay. Ang mangyayari niyan, okay hindi ka makakatagos dito kasi meron tayong tinatawag na filtering. So, na-filter out na. Okay? Bandpass filter yan eh. Uh, Kung baga, ina-allow lang talaga nung, nung, nung device ay itong frequency na ito na pumasok. Okay? So, what will, happen to, what will happen to your phone is that maka-cancel out lang kasi hindi niya papatagosin dito. Okay? Kung baga ito, dahil nga ito yung buong frequency spectrum lang ng, ng 5G na ginagamit sa Pinas, let's say. So, lahat ng mga outside nung itong band na to ika-cancel out niya. Mm. Uh, oh, hindi niya papatagusin yan kasi it will create an ano eh, uh, unwanted uh, uh, signal. Yeah? So yan, i-filter, ang tawag yan, filter out. So, ma-ex yung, yung, yung phone mo. Hindi ka makatagos. So, hindi, ang makukuha mo lang is basically yung mga other frequency bands na capable, like, baka pumunta ka lang sa LTE. Ganun. So, the, the highest technology that you could get is yung LTE lang. Kung yung LTE mo is pasok dun sa sa frequency band ulit lang. Pero again, if you're purchasing uh, devices here in the Philippines, lahat ng mga uh, 5G phones naman natin and lahat ng devices natin are being type approved by NTC. So, kaya pag tingnan mo yung phone, wala na ako natatanggal yung takip sa likod. Pag binuksan mo yan, may nakalagay na yung logo ng NTC na maliit na maliit na sticker yon, meaning dumaan sa type approval process nila. Kasi we're not allowing any frequencies na lalala kung hindi natin ginagamit sa Pilipinas to operate 
kasi magiging uh, it's either a uh, jammer yung mga end or mga magkakaos ng interference to other uh, local service providers. Yan. So, sana sagot natin yun, no? Yung tanong niya. So, Sir, may... Sige, okay lang. Go lang. Go, go sir. Shoot. Okay, okay. So, thank you, Rachel, for that question. So, next is si David Diaz. Sabi niya, based on 10 GPPS max theoretical speed ni 5G, what is that all for is that for all users sharing a cell tower or paghahati-hati and pa ba ng lahat ng users yun? Correct. Nga, uh, magandang question yan. Pag tinignan natin yung ITU uh, even yung uh, natin to, kung makikita natin sa graph na to, no, there are already two things that you, you have to check or you ha we have to understand. No? And nakikita natin yun is peak data rate at saka yung yung tinatawag nating user experience data rate. At makikita natin that the peak data rate is different from the user experience data rate. While the peak data rate is 20 Gbps, yung user experience rate natin runs from 100 to 1000 ano, 1000 Mbps or 1 Gbps. Bakit kaya? No? Bakit natin kaya bakit kaya natin bakit natin na sabing na ganun? Kumbaga Ang taas ng data rate, peak data rate ko, pero yung user experience ko is lower than the, the peak data rate. It's because the, 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 the cell or, or yung tinatawag nating coverage ng 5G, sinishare yan sa lahat ng possible uh, uh, connected users. Okay? At ang, ang tawag natin doon, though, uh, hindi ako paano, sir, ha? Kasi yung, yung, yung tanong na yun is a technical question. And I have to answer it technical then. Para lang maintindihan natin yung concept behind every cellular communication. Kasi hindi ko siya inalagay initially. I was thinking. Para lang maintindihan din ng mga viewers natin. Sir, nakikita ba? Mm, yes, sir. Ah, okay. So, meron tayo tinatawag na filtered orthogonal frequency division multiple access. Okay. Ang, pag tinignan natin yung graph, no, let's focus on this uh, this thing. Pag tinignan natin, meron tayong user 1, user 2, user 3, and user 4. Well, the 5G is a very, uh, is one of the intelligent, uh, one of the intelligent features that it has, ito ang tatawag na filtered orthogonal frequency division multiple access, wherein it gives an access to a certain user that would only require yung amount of data. Okay? Kaya makikita natin dun sa user experience rate natin, nagbabago-bago siya, depende dun sa requirement mo. Meaning kung halimbawa, kung, mag kung magpe-Facebook ka lang, yung data na kakainin mo is very small as compared to sa nanood ng YouTube video. Okay? Now, maximizing the resources being allotted to each of the user, meron tayong tinatawag na filtered or tawag ng nga, OFDMA. Meaning, yung isang, isang pag-schedule ko, ba, in schedule ko lahat ng users ko to give certain access to my network, naghahati-hati sila depende dun sa gagamitin nilang application. Let's say, kung lahat sila gagamit ng 1 Gbps, okay? Lahat sila 1 Gbps. Kaya makikita natin, meron akong pwedeng schedule with the maximum data rate of 10 Gbps, pwede ako mag-schedule ng 10 user at the same time. Meaning, hindi na sasayang yung resources ko every time na mag-schedule ako ng users. Kaya tama ka, they are, yung, yung, yung sinasabi nating uh, 10 Gbps na target dito, Yung sinasabi natin 10 GBPS dito, what we call the enhanced mobile broadband, paghahati at yan pa ng mga users. And again, yung, yung, yung speed mo would always be dependent dun sa magiging requirement mo. And again, kung titignan natin yung device capability ng 
mono na, na inner chest. Kaya makikita natin din dito sa ibang devices dito. Na naka-specify din yung mga ano eh, yung mga speed. So halimbawa dito, no, for LTE, nasa 2,000 Mbps lang for downlink and 200 Mbps for up. Minsan naka-specify talaga yan per devices. Alin yung, ano ba yung processing power ng processor mo pagdating when it comes to cellular? So naka-indicate naka, naka yung mga yan. Pero I think the highest na nakita ko is 1 Gbps eh, or 2 Gbps plus yung nakita ko na pinakamataas. Meaning, Pwede with the with the 10 Gbps na capability ng tower or ng site, no? pwede ako makapag-schedule ng 10 or more. Depende sa paggamit ng iba't ibang techniques. For more users using 2 Gbps or let's say 1 to 2 Gbps per second. Again, ang scheduling natin is nakabase siya sa, sa 1 millisecond. And that happens in a millisecond period. Ha? So, hindi natin siya mapapansin per... Meaning, sa isang, sa isang segundo, Diba? So, one second is composes per year. So, equivalent to 1,000 milliseconds. So, ibig sabihin, makapag-schedule na ako ng 1,000 times within a second na mga iba't ibang users that are being shared on that one, one tower. Ayan. So, sa sana sagot natin yun. Kaya, yung user experience natin, iba siya sa tinatawag natin uh, data pick rate. Okay? User experience always depends on what application and depende din kung ano, kung, kung Ano yung radio condition mo? Kasi this is wireless. Eh. Ano yung magiging radio condition mo? Yun yung magbibigay sa'yo kung magiging quality ng signal mo. At the same time, ganong kadabing bits ang pwede kong ipadala over a period of a second. Yan. Uh, Patangis sa sir na, go, shoot. Ano pa yung isang question natin? Hello, Dave. Ano daw yung last question? Meron pa tayong isang question, no? Nawala si Dave. Uh, 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 or baka, <laughs> ay, hello, hello. Nakamit pala sa'yo, sorry. Ayan, ayan, ayan. <laughs> so, ayun. Um, last question na lang siguro na for, from David Glenn Justiniano. Sir, what uh, are your comments about 5G na capable daw of security breach? na mention mo kasi kanina yung sa IoT na pwede magamit sa iba't ibang services. Security breach, yes. Uh, when it comes to security, no, madami naman tayong protocols na ginagamit. Uh, pwede tayong gumamit ng mga... Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not security expert, pero there are some agents that we are deploying in different types. So, pero pagka sinabi natin kasing cellular, sa cellular technology muna, no, gumagamit siya ng seven-layer protocols. Ngayon mga naman tayong uh, MAC, or uh, tawag natin medium access control, meron tayong PDCP, RRC, these are all protocols no, that are uh, stacked up. And each of the stack, no, meron siyang tinatawag na encryption. So in terms of security, mahirap siya i-break kasi meron siyang seven layers. I'm not sure if there are, well, well wala pa akong narinig na na experience for seven years na na-access na yung mga phones using cellular technologies kasi nga napaka-strict ng security measures ng cellular technology. But on the IoT, Yun, uh, kasi yung, yung sasabi nating IoT is the use of different physical devices. And pagdating sa IoT kasi madami tayong uh, types of connectivity. So pwede kang gumamit ng gateway. No? Uh, pero pag 5G kasi, gagamit ka ng direct 5G and direct 5G device. So in terms of controlling uh, the connectivity between the device and the network, we have to use yung protocols din na uh, sasabi natin na stack up. Pagka platform, pagka, pagka gateway based, no, yun yung medyo challenge. And uh, it's something that we have to to discuss, no, but particular sa mga industry kasi kailangan ting aralin ang bang, ang bang gateway ang gagamitin. At saka bago natin di-deploy yan, we have to check with, you know, then with internet security din kung ano yung ginagamit nilang protocols. Pero kadalasan, uh, gumagamit sila ng mga agents no, to, to protect this one. And uh, kung papunta ng palabas ng platform, may mga cases na nakita ako na gumagamit din ng mga HTTPS, which is secure din. And sa pagdating naman kay, kay network naman, no, usually gumagamit siya ng TCP or Transport Control Protocol. So yun. Security-wise, uh, yun lang kaya kong i-discuss for now. No? Kasi yung, yung IoT deployment ng 5G is still on the way. And uh, we are yet to study din yung mga 3GPP releases 
no, in terms of the security on massive IoT deployment. Alright. To learn more about yun yan, sa sa ating GPP M, uh, MMTC, no? Kung ano po kayo, sir? Kung uh, medyo gusto yung matutunan siya, nandito po lahat yan sa 3GPP. Okay, uh, that concludes the, ano, the present. Hello, sir. Okay, na kayo, yes. sir. Okay, na, yeah. Ayun, that uh -huh. concludes the presentation for introduction of 5G networks. I hope magami kayo natutunan today. Uh, madami rin sana kayong na clear sa head nyo about speculations about 5G and whatnot. And, and you've learned today how 5G really works on how it connects to from application to a device to the server, diba? So, uh, yun. Any additional comments, sir? Any additional plugs or anything you want to say? Uh, siguro, magbe-base lang ako lagi dito, no? Uh, lagi kung gusto mong sabihin to. Part na to. Again, uh, say ito yan. You have to find siguro yung ano yung purpose no on on why 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 do you want bigger data, and again you have parang it's it's what we do with what we have. So you always have a purpose on why you're doing something, and I think if you if you look for that purpose no you will never go wrong. Yeah, siguro. Magami salamat po. Yon, thank you, sir. Plug. Bakam lang ako yung gusto ni plug na ano business or anything. Go lang po. Ah, wala na wala. Ah, wala na. Wala na. Basta lahat in service sa na, in service talaga. Okay, okay. Filipino. Lalo yung mga lalo yung mga tao ngayon na gusto mag-connect online with their work from home setup and mga online learning. No, hope this technology. No, that's why we're sa sa team namin. We're looking talaga for possible technologies that could help ng millions of Filipino connecting them to to the internet para magkaroon sila ng ano ng ng way to learn more. No, given this time of pandemic. And yun nga. I hope this technologies will Yun. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you, sir, for ano yes, for giving us po. time. Malamig, salamat, sir. Salamat po. <laughs> ang laki, ang laki ng tulong niya to sa lalo sa mga pinoy na ano na medyo malabu pa sa five G. Oh, ay. So, so ayun, you have anything to say? Ayun, uh, mapapanood natin itong replay, no? And di, anytime dito sa ating Facebook page. And we will be posting din, um, this also sa ating YouTube channel. Sana makita dun sa mga uh, recommended videos. Ito. Kasi magandang topic siya. And very informative. Lalo't nanggaling sa isang expert yung yes. details. Ayan. So again, salamat po. Sige, Dave. Okay. So yun nga, that includes everything. Um, I'm hey, I'm Dave Molina, the co-founder of, of Academia. And Romel, pangalala ka? Uh, I'm Romel po, uh, founder ng Academia. Yeah. <laughs> si Sir, Sir yeah, Derek. Si Sir Derek. Uh, and uh, Dave yes, from, okay. from Globe Telecom. Yun. So yeah, thank you for your time guys. Salamat. Salamat po. Thank Salamat you. Po. Thank you.